Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Foreman PHP IPAM uh, demonstration video. Uh, today I'm going to show the integration between Foreman and PHP IPAM uh, using the Foreman IPAM and Smart Proxy IPAM plugins. So first I'm going to log into Foreman here and show sort of the page. So there's two, two plugins. Uh, the, the first is the Foreman IPAM plugin and the second is the Smart Proxy plugin. So in the Foreman IPAM plugin we have a new link here in the infrastructure menu called IPAM dashboard. So if I click on that it's not going to show me anything right now because I have no sections or no data in my PHP IPAM instance. Uh, so we're going to go create a section with a couple of subnets and we'll just call this development Okay, so we have our section. Now I'm going to create a couple of subnets. So the first subnet is just going to be uh, a subnet where we're going to draw available IPs from. That's going to be this one. We'll call it available subnet. And I'm going to create another subnet which just has two addresses and we're going to call that full subnet just because we want to demonstrate what happens when you try to get an IP from a full subnet. So we got our two subnets here. Uh, so now if we go back over to the IPAM dashboard and refresh, we see, our, we see the section now and when we click on the section, we get all the subnets that are within that section. So there's more development to be done on this page. This is sort of bare bones right now. Um, some of the other things we're looking to build are, you know, when you click on the subnet, maybe you show all the, the IPs that are allocated or not allocated. Uh, maybe the integration with the subnets so we can create subnets from this page. Uh, that's still TBD, but at this point, that's this is where it's at. Uh, so now I'm gonna create the subnets that I just created in PHP IPAM in Foreman. Okay, so the first one's going to be the available subnet, and that was the 10. Dot, that one, slash 29, which has six addresses. So you can see here uh, in the IPAM drop down, uh, there's a new item called external IPAM. Uh, this becomes available after you install the Foreman IPAM plugin uh, and the proxy as well. Uh, so let's use example.com and we're going to associate the proxy. So, so you have to have at least one proxy running that has the feature external IPAM enabled uh, or the smart proxy plugin enabled and running. So I have that up and running in my local proxy, so I'm going to set that one. Um, and I think that's good, so I'll hit submit. Okay, so that's one subnet created. We'll go create the full one now. And that was a slash 30, only two addresses. Okay, so now we have our two subnets. Uh, so before I, let's create a bogus one just to see what happens when the subnet does not exist, for example. We'll just say 1.1.1. .1 .1. We know that one doesn't exist. So it's saying subnet not found in the, in the IPAM instance, which makes sense because it's not there. So there is some error handling here, uh, which is good. So now the next step is let's go create a host using those subnets to get the next available IP. So I'm going to create this host, go into the interfaces, set a MAC address, so we have, we have our two subnets here. 
before I select the subnet, uh, upon selection of the subnet, it's actually going to make the real-time API call uh, to the PHP IPAM instance to get the next available IP. So first we'll select the full one just to see what happens. Oh, it's returning an IP because I forgot to actually reserve these IPs manually. So let's do that now. So if we go back here and cancel out of that, and then we select the full subnet, it says no free address is found. So, so that subnet's full, which is expected. So we'll select the available one, and that gives us the first available IP, which is the dot one, uh, which kind of makes sense because that's the first available IP right in this range. So. I'm going to click OK to that. Then we're going to add another interface. But you, you'll notice that even though this IP has been suggested, it's still not actually reserved in PHP IPAM yet. So we're going to set another interface here. I'm just going to grab a dummy MAC address here and change it. Select the domain and select available again. So now it's giving me the, the dot two address, which is actually the one the next the next one after dot one, even though neither have been reserved. So what's happening there is there's actually an in-memory cache running on the proxy that will store the IP addresses suggested by MAC address. Uh, so that way, uh, in the case of race conditions where you have multiple users creating hosts simultaneously, uh, it's going to uh, use that cache so that the same IP is not served up to you know users using different MAC addresses as, as an example. Uh, so so that kind of handles the the race conditions. So if we got so we have dot one and two here. Uh, again, not reserved yet. Uh, once we click submit and create the host, that's when, that's when they'll get reserved. So let's do that now. Okay, so that's created. And if we go here, we'll see that those two addresses were reserved. So alternatively, we delete this host now. Actually, let's not do that yet. Let's do another, uh, I'm going to create another host before we delete that one. And we're going to use one of the addresses that we know is reserved. So if we use available, it should give me the dot three, which is the next one, which makes sense. But I'm going to manually change it to one. Okay, so we got an error saying some of the interfaces are invalid. So you can see this address has already been reserved in PHP IPAM. So if we change it back to the dot three, or alternatively, we could um, just change the subnet back and forth. and save that that will get created now so, so now we should see the dot three reserved which it is um, so now we can go to all hosts so if we delete all these hosts we should see all those IPs go away okay so all those hosts are gone and if I refresh it, you can see all those IPs are now freed up. So, so that's basically it. Uh, alternatively, if I go into a host and, and update the IPs on an existing interface, uh, it's going to uh, reserve the new IP and delete the old IP as well by API call. So, so whatever you do in Foreman, uh, it's going to persist that information back to PHP IPAM as well. 
Uh, and that concludes the video. Thanks for watching.